In this video, we are going to take a look at colliders. Actually, we're going to start taking a look at colliders because we're going to have to break this up into multiple videos. Now, as we mentioned in the intro video, a collider is just an invisible surface that allows us to calculate collisions. Right. Without them, rigid bodies are going to be really boring. That's right. So it's all about calculating collisions. Now, for the purposes of our discussion, we're going to consider colliders to come in three different flavors. And those are primitive colliders, the mesh collider, our special case wheel collider, and the wheel collider. That's right. Now, in this video, I am just going to be focusing on the primitive colliders which have a lot of things already in common with the mesh collider. And we'll talk about that in a separate video. And then in still another video, we'll talk about the wheel collider, which is a very, very special case that you're really just going to be using for uh, car wheels if you're making something like a car game. Now let's just take a look at the primitive collider. Now, the primitive colliders in include three different types of collider. We have the sphere collider, the... the Box collider. collider. Mm -hmm. And the last one? The capsule collider. That's right. Now, these are the simplest types of colliders that you can get. They are based off of mathematical formula, and they're very fast in calculation, which is why you want to use these as much as possible. That's right. They are procedural, which makes them very, very fast and easy to calculate. There's, it's not like an internal shape that has a stored series of vertices. It's literally just a mathematic equation to define the area of a primitive shape, and that is used to calculate your basic collision. So let's jump over into Unity, and let's take a look at our primitive colliders. Now, the first thing I need to do is make a rigid body. I don't think I have any left in the scene anymore. So let's go under Create, and I'll drop on a cube. Now, a cube already comes in with a box collider, but it's still not a rigid body. So let's go under Component, underneath Physics, and drop on a rigid body. Now, before I talk about this collider at all, as a matter of fact, let's just remove the collider, at least for now. So we'll knock it out entirely. If we want to add a collider, they can all be found under the physics submenu of component. And you'll see we have box collider, sphere collider, capsule collider, and then there's mesh and wheel. So let's just start by, well, see, we'll keep things a little bit uh, standard. We'll go right down the list. We'll start off with putting a box collider back on. And let's take a look at our properties. The very first property we have is material. Now, what's this, this property going to do? Well, the material, as we mentioned a couple of videos back, is a list of physical properties that dictate how these, or this collider will react when it is hit by another collider. That's right. This material property is a reference to a physics material, which is a collection of physical properties that define how this object should behave in terms of friction and bounciness and things like that. Now, there are some physics materials included with Unity, so if I go under my standard assets folder, I've already loaded these in, so they're under physics materials. I can just drag and drop these in, so I can grab, say, wood, and just drop that on like so. Now, for the purposes of our discussion, this is probably the only time I'm going to do that. Uh, if I forget to drop on another physics material when we switch over to another collider, it's just for the sake of discussion. Now, the next property we have is, is trigger. And now, let me one, show you. Yeah. Actually, but yeah, before we even talk about it, I just want to show you something. If I hit play, you'll see that right now my box just falls and hits the ground, and we can walk over to it, and it's just kind of sitting there. However, as soon as I click is trigger, watch what happens. It just falls through the world. What's going on here, Lee? Well, is trigger is another one of our special cases. This takes our collider and converts it from a um, traditional collider in the fact that it reacts with the world and physics and other colliders and turns it into a trigger volume. What that means is when something penetrates this trigger volume, it sends an event to a script that can be listening for it to fire off different um, functionality. That's right. This collider knows when something like a character is outside of it or when a character is inside of it. And by switching a collider to is trigger, you're telling that collider to no longer listen to 
the physics system, the physics engine, in order to calculate whether something should bounce off of it, all you want to know is when something enters that volume. Now you might be thinking off the top of your head, why would this ever be important? Well, let's say I've got a level, and this is actually a wall, and I've got a door in the wall, and I want these doors to open when a character gets close. Because the trigger is aware of the moment that a character enters it, I can use that moment of entry to send a signal via script to these doors to cause them to open. Right, and conversely, you can also send another signal when that character leaves that volume to close the doors. That's right. Now, again, that has to do with scripting. It has nothing to do with physics because once you click this, you're really not calculating uh, collisions in terms of physics anyway. So it's beyond the scope, but I still wanted you to know what it did. So I'll erase that, and we'll jump back over to Unity. And you'll see that same property uh, pop up on all of our different colliders. For now, I'll go ahead and just leave it off. Now, those first two properties being the material, which holds our physics material, and is trigger, which allows us to switch off physics collisions and just detect whether or not something has entered this volume, those are are constants. They're always going to be there. And then after that, we have properties that allow us to control the shape and placement of the collider itself. These are going to be different from each of the primitive colliders. So if we start with a box, we have a size in X, Y, and Z, which do pretty much what you'd think they do, allow you to resize that collider box in all three axes. And we have a center if we need to offset it for some reason. Now, there's kind of an interesting thing here. The next thing I'm going to do is actually swap out this collider. And I want to show you something as we do this because it... It allows me to bring up a rule of thumb, not a hard and fast rule, not something that you absolutely must do or, you know, the world will implode in a fiery ball of death. Uh, just something that I think you should always keep in mind and always try to adhere to. And that is that every game object should generally only have one collider component attached to it at any given time. Now there's a reason for that, and if for some reason you have a complicated object that needs multiple colliders, I will show you how to do that in a separate video over compound colliders. But for now, let's just keep in mind that as a rule of thumb, you should try to avoid having multiple colliders, and I'll show you why. Let's say we go under Component, jump down to Physics, and grab the Sphere Collider. We get a little window that says Replace Existing Component. A box collider is already added. Do you want to replace it with a Sphere Collider? And you can choose replace, which by the way, you'll notice is the default, or you can choose add or cancel. Well, let's see what happens if we click add. Now we get a sphere collider. Now I'll take just a second and talk about the sphere collider. It has the same two first properties, material and is trigger, but now it has some sphere centric properties as well. It has a radius and it has a center so that we can offset it. I'm gonna leave its offset at zero. And you see it's kind of got the, the increased size. Let's watch what happens when we hit play. The box falls to the ground, and it kind of rotated a little bit. It's kind of hard to see, though. Let me take the center of our box, and we'll lift it up into the air, and then take a look at this. And there you go. It kind of rocks off over onto the side. Right. The physics is using both of those colliders to calculate the collisions with the terrain. That's right. Now, I'll hit play one more time so you can see that. And I'll kind of walk over to it, and you can see the behavior. Now, that might automatically get your noodle bacon, and you're thinking, oh, well, that's just awesome. I could create all kinds of really cool collisions like that, and you would be right. You absolutely can create awesome collisions with multiple primitives. But putting them all on the same game object can be a little problematic. Let's just say, for sake of example, that you want to have another box collider over here on the other side, kind of like this one. If we go over to Component, jump down to Physics, and choose Box Collider, we get a problem. It says can't add the same component multiple times. The component box collider can't be added because cube already contains the same components. We had to click cancel. You can have multiple collider components on a single game object, but they all have you can only have one of each kind. That makes it a little bit problematic and comes back to that rule of thumb where you're going to have a much easier time if you just consider each game object as only being allowed to contain a single collider. Right. And you get an advantage by doing that as well, which we'll cover in a later video. That's right. Now, I will, again, I'll show you how you can create compound colliders out of multiple primitives, but there is a trick to it. So for now, we're not really going to dwell on that. Now, the last type of collider we're going to discuss in this video is the capsule collider. This is our final primitive. 
If I click replace, here it is. Now, currently, it doesn't look like a capsule at all. Right. And why is that? Well, what it's doing is when you put a new collider into an object, it tries to fit that collider to the object that you placed it on the best it can. Mm -hmm. In this case, because we're using a cube that is a perfect square of one by one by one, our capsule is shrunk down to look like a perfect sphere. It is. And if we take a look at its properties, we have material, we have is trigger, and then from this, we have our shape property. So we can increase the radius. We can increase the height. And as we increase the height, we actually get that capsuloid shape. We can also change the direction. So right now, it's oriented along Y. We can make it orient along X or orient along Z. Let's go ahead and set that back to Y. And then finally, we can offset this. And we can move it in all three axes if we need to wiggle it around. So that is really all there is to the primitive colliders at their base level. It's really just a matter of picking the one that's right for your particular object. Again, I'm just going to jump back over to physics. I'll drop a sphere collider on here. We'll replace and hit play, and we get a really cool rolling action. Just notice that the, the sphere collider is completely separate from our visible geometry. So it's really that invisible surface that's handling our collision. And it has nothing to do with our visible shape whatsoever. Right. And one of the things to keep in mind is when you're planning your level and you're laying everything out, most of the stuff you can get away with are the primitive colliders. You do not have to have vertex perfect uh, mesh colliders mm -hmm. for everything. If you look at our camp scene, that could be done with a couple of box colliders, maybe a sphere collider, or if you really want to be picky, maybe a capsule collider on the tent. Mm -hmm. And you could get away with just that. You don't need to use a higher res um, collider. That's right. And the simpler you can keep things, the better. But that will wrap things up for this video. Thank you for watching.